Hi guys, today we are going to discuss about artificial skin. So as we all know that the skin is the largest organ of the human body and of course it's the sense organ so it can sense any sort of environmental stimuli such as it may sense uh, pressure, it may sense temperature, it may sense the heat or the cold. So when we talk about skin more so now what is artificial skin artificial skin is a mimicry of the original skin right so it is something we can use any material which can be used to replace the original skin or it can mimic the role of the layers present in the skin so that when it when you see it looks exactly like the original skin basically it's the copy it's kind of a copy of the original skin so artificial skin the skin is being is being used where a person uh, suffers from the loss of a skin or there is some damage to the skin like sometimes the skin skin the skin gets burned excessively so in those cases where there is excessive burning or there is some loss of the skin due to any condition present then we use the artificial skin to replace the original skin other uh, uses might include the some various skin diseases where the skin has been affected adversely so there also we use the artificial skin now if we talk about the anatomical overview of the human skin then we will see in the diagram that there are two primary layers one is the epidermis and the other is the dermis so now epidermis means epi means above this is the layer that is above the dermis so the upper layer is epidermis and below the epidermis there is another layer that is called dermis so epidermis does not contain any blood vessels so the point is that how the transport of nutrients takes place the transport of nutrients to the epidermis occurs, occurs through the dermis layer right another very interesting feature is that how the human skin perceives any kind of signal so there are different skin receptors and there are major seven types first one is the pain receptor now the pain receptor as the name suggests it will pick up the stimuli for the pain another is cold receptor for cold warm receptor to perceive warmth or heat and then there are four mechano receptors which will pick up the mechanical stimuli from the environment so this is how the skin perceives the external stimuli from the environment now when we talk about the brief history of the artificial skin then there are several countries which have given their contributions such as India where the skin has been transplanted from the buttocks to repair the multilated ears and nose then there is Italy which is being famous for the use of allogenous skin graft then England where skin grafts were being proposed for burn treatment and most advanced is the United States for the reason that the very first tissue engineered skin known as epigla uh, epi known as apligraph was being approved by the FDA. Another important FDA approved are dermograft and or cell and integra treatment of severe burns so as we can see that india being the most advanced as it showed the transplantation of the skin starting from 3000 bc itself now how artificial skin is made usually it is donated by some other donors and the fibroblasts are being removed from this donated skin and then they are frozen so what they do is that the fibroblasts are then placed on a polymeric mesh so that they can gather oxygen and then they will be able to form the new cells so a new layer of cells is formed now eventually 
what happens is when the new layer of this dermal skin is being formed then after a couple of weeks the polymer mesh finally gets dissolved once it is dissolved it means that the growth cycle is completed so now we are going to add more and more nutrients so what are we going to add we are going to add keratinocytes to the collagen and then it is being exposed to the air so what happens that it will form the epidermal layers so first the dermal skin is being formed followed by the epidermal layer right now once both of these layers are being formed our skin is now complete and as soon as we have got this new artificial skin it is being stored in the sterile containers until it is being ready to use Now the question comes in how this artificial skin actually works. Now during surgical procedure what happens is that this artificial skin is secured over the wound very carefully and it is allowed to remain in place there for a couple of weeks so that the new tissue grows into the bottom matrix layer. Now this top layer it provides the protection to the wounded area to the new area from the infection and dehydration right skin grafts versus artificial skin the skin grafts are basically patches of the skin that have been removed from the healthy skin areas and what is being done these skin grafts or these skin patches are then pasted onto the damaged area right but what happens in the case of artificial skin a completely new skin is being prepared from the already skin growing cells through the technique of animal cell culture now here this skin this artificial skin is a beautiful example or a beautiful technique for animal cell culture now where do we get this skin from how do we obtain it now there are different sources like if i'm going to take the skin from the patient itself right then it is being known as autograph why autograph because auto means self so now here patient is the source so when it is being taken from the self or person's patient's own skin then it is known as autograft in case it is being taken from say another human so another allo allo stands for another that means different from different human then it is known as allograft why it is known as xenograft in case of pigs or cows because pigs means from another source from a foreign source now pigs or cows they are not related to humans you right so in this case from a very different source it is known as xenografts in case of animals if we take right because that is a foreign source right so according to the sources from where this can be obtained it is categorized as autograft in case of self allograft in case of different human and from totally different source such as pigs or cows it is known as xenografts now let me tell you here that if in case of xenografts these can be used as temporary solutions in case of allografts and xenografts these are the temporary wound coverings they are the temporary solutions why because there are very high chances of the rejection advantages and disadvantages of artificial skin now when we talk about the advantages of the artificial skin the very first advantage is that it increases the survival chances for the burn patients so sometimes the burning goes to such a level where a patient is unable to survive in that case the only hope is artificial skin right what it does is it seals the wounds so that the fluid is not being lost and also it prevents the bacteria from entering through the wound thereby causing further infection right another very important advantage is that the fear of stigmatization of the patient is eliminated now what happens when a patient is going through a condition like the it is he or she might be excessively burned so there is a fear of stigmatization that whether the society is going to accept that particular person as he is now so in that case artificial skin is a boon it's a kind of blessing to to prevent the adverse effect on the mental health of the patient right when we talk about 
about the disadvantages the disadvantages includes the risk of infection and rejection by the patients because sometimes if we are using allografts or xenografts then there are possibilities of the rejection then there might be the loss of sensitivity or the blood supply may be cut another point is that where the advantages include that it prevents the fluid loss there is a condition where this fluid starts building up in between the wounded side and the new transplanted skin so this leads to further complication right and very important disadvantage which is actually very crucial is that this artificial skin is very very expensive so it is not an easy easy approach right now what are its future prospects so with, when we talk about the future prospects one approach is that uh, we can replicate the patient's own genetically modified skin cells which then could be used for the generation of the artificial skin another very important future prospect where the scientists are working day in day out is like electronic skin where we can use the special receptors to the artificial skin so that the patients can have a sense of touch right because a uh, loss of sensitivity it uh, is being lost with the artificial skin so it will be very nice if a patient can have a sense of touch with this skin right now another approach is the use of synthetic skin apart from the artificial biological skin synthetic skin is also being developed in the hopes that it might give a sense of touch to the you know non living structures and they also use a similar kind of uh, receptors where the signals uh, will be able to mimic this sense of touch right it includes the application in robotics including advanced prosthetic limbs so i hope that uh, you would have got the idea of art artificial skin what the artificial skin is what are the advantages disadvantages what are the future prospects what is the difference between a skin graft and artificial skin so all these topics i have tried to cover up in a single video so in case you have any query you can leave your comments in the comment section i'll be happy to reply to each one of you and don't forget to like the channel subscribe the channel and share it with your friends and family right that is all for today thank you so much stay tuned